the next acute uh, symptom patient present with is an acute scrotum. So it can be a torsion of uh, appendix, torsion of uh, spermatic cord or torsion of the testis. It can be infections like epididymitis, epidemorchitis. All this, this can be easily ruled out with a simple ultrasonography and a history taking. History generally with epididymitis and epididymorchitis is a long standing, really it will take about 3 to 4 days. Secondary factors like diabetes or immunosuppression might be the cause. Unlike in uh, torsion of uh, spermatic cord or torsion of testis where the patient is young male, adolescent male with an acute history or acute uh, spontaneous onset of uh, testicular pain. Rare, rare causes can still be uh, vasculitis or dermatological lesions which will make acute scrotum. So the first investigation of uh, choice in acute scrotum is a duplex ultrasound of scrotum. If the diagnosis is clinically suspicious, yes, we do not delay the patient for any investigation. The color Doppler ultrasound has the maximum sensitivity of 88 percent and the specificity of 98 percent. Yes, here you can see the reduced blood supply to the testis and also you can make out the twist or the torsion of the spermatic cord at uh, be, uh, be just before the junction where the blood supply has stopped. So surgical exploration is uh, very important. One is to diagnose the problem, derotate the testis and make sure that uh, it is not any other problem in the form of uh, epidemiorchitis. Yes, occasionally we may find on table that we have taken the patient into uh, OR with the primary diagnosis of uh, torsion, but we may land up of in uh, acute epidemiorchitis. But yes, still it, that is okay, but we can manage with antibiotics. But we just we have not missed out torsion and uh, lost his testis. So uh, uh, an acute uh, epidemiorchitis generally is an indolent process, indolent process where he has a scrotal swelling, erythema, pain. And uh, generally, they have very severe tenderness, and uh, the cremastic uh, reflex is present in epidemiorchitis, where, whereas it is lost in uh, torsion. Here, the management is bed rest, scrotal support, I, uh, parenteral antibiotics with IV uh, to uh, after diagnosing uh, his uh, UTI. <laughs> And any urethral instrumentation, perurethral instrumentation, catheterization should be avoided in uh, epidemiorchitis. Suppose if you have a large epidemiorchitis with retention, the preferred mode of uh, drainage would be an SPC over a Foley's catheter. The next emergency where uh, we are called is priapism. It is persistent erection of penis for more than four hours that is not related with a sexual desire. It can be ischemic or a non-ischemic. Generally, ischemic uh, priapisms are painful, whereas a non-ischemic uh, priapisms are painless. Uh, now, the role of a urologist to treat is, uh, priapism is more in ischemic, where we have to act very fast within six hours to drain the blood. The diagnosis for ischemic and non-ischemic is first is clinical. The next thing is we draw uh, corporal blood and uh, check his ABG. If the, if the uh, partial pressure of oxygen in the ABG is lesser than 30, we diagnose it as an ischemic priapism versus a non-ischemic priapism where the partial pressure of oxygen is more than 90 millim uh, millimeters of mercury. So this uh, we have to diagnose because the mode of therapy or mode of treatment is completely different. Other causes for priapism include drugs, uh, some uh, trauma, uh, hematological diseases like sickle cell disease and tumor. The diagnosis is usually obvious from the history and the duration of erection should be more than 4 hours. Painful or not is because we have to differentiate between an ischemic and a non-ischemic uh, priapism. And uh, the previous history of and treatment of priapism is also important because only in sickle cell disease, these patients have repeated episodes of priapism. Yes, that we can, that indicates that it is again an ischemic type of uh, priapism which has to be treated immediately. 
the treatment depends on the type of plasma as i uh, told uh, initially many of the time it is a conservative treatment where uh, if it is an ischemic preaplasm we uh, inject uh, phenyl ephrine we drain the blood inject multiple episodes of phenyl phenyl ephrine in the dose of 100 to 500 micrograms uh, diluted uh, phenyl ephrine up to 1 hour see the response generally 80 to 90 percent they respond and then we manage accordingly suppose if it fails then there is a surgical option where we shunt the blood by in the form of shunts the next form of urological emergencies are trauma the most important ones and the most common ones are the renal trauma the bladder trauma and the urethral injuries Ureteral injuries are rare, usually we get on table calls for uh, ureteral injuries, otherwise uh, in emergencies the renal trauma and the bladder trauma are uh, very common and it is very important to know how we do we manage. It can be blunt or penetrating, a direct blow or acceleration or deceleration injuries to the kidney can cause this, a penetrating with uh, injury with knives and gunshot or atrogenic, yes can cause this type of renal trauma. Indications for renal imaging, the best Im imaging is contrast enhanced CECT abdomen and pelvis with delayed phase if the patient is hemodynamically stable. So microscopic hematuria, penetrating injuries associated, uh, hypertensive patient which has been resuscitated, a rapid acceleration or deceleration uh, injury in the history or any child with a microscopic hematuria with a trauma, blunt injury abdomen war warrants any renal imaging. Non contrast imaging is uh, inferior. Yes, contrast CECT abdomen is accurate, rapid, and images other than uh, and it images all other organs also uh, for management. So, generally, we try to grade these renal injuries from right from subcapsular hematoma up to renal avulsion. The highest grade is uh, vascular uh, pedicle avulsion. Grade 4 involves uh, the uh, the collecting system uh, injury. So, generally we can classify in this uh, group and up to grade 1 to 4 uh, still there is role for uh, non uh, exploratory laparotomy provided we have sufficient uh, ICU backup and monitoring system and grade 5 of vascular injury uh, yes we have a role for nephrectomy. So, these are the images the right kidney has a small laceration of the upper pole of the kidney. These type of injuries are generally uh, monitored and they settle, they do not require any exploratory laparotomy and procedure. 95 percent of the uh, images, 95 percent of the injuries are managed conservatively. Of the Penetrating injuries of isolated kidney, then 50 percent are still managed conservatively. We just monitor their hemoglobin, their uh, urine outputs and their uh, general condition without intervening them. Bed rest, IV antibiotics and vital signs monitoring, hemoglobin are the key four indicators where which tells that the patient is not deteriorating. Surgical exploration is limited only for patients we have persistent bleeding who are hypotensive persistent hypotensive they are expanding there is expanding perineal hematoma on follow up or there is a pulsatile perineal hematoma. The next form of uh, injuries are in the form of bladder injuries where it can be a penetrating or a blunt injury. Rarely spontaneous ruptures can happen in uh, very in, uh, in uh, cases of benign enlargement of prostate where the bladder in, bladder is, has uh, severe uh, excessive uh, filling pressures. This type of injuries can be classified into intraperitoneal and extraperitoneal. Why this classification is important because almost all the extraperitoneal perforations, the second pictures, the second picture shows. <coughs> The contrast, this is a CT histogram where we have passed the catheter and filled the contrast and then taken a CT. This is not a delayed phase. The dye has gone beyond the bladder, but still it is contained inside the peritoneum. So, these are gen 
the injuries were which can be managed almost 95 percent conservatively. We just have to place a catheter, monitor them for two to four weeks. Unlike this type of injury where the bladder has been injured and the whole dye is passing in the whole abdomen. So the problem here is the urine keeps leaking in the, into the peritoneum, it keeps getting absorbed into the peritoneum, it, it causes raised creatinine, it can cause peritonitis. These injuries have to be treated surgically. So generally with intraperitoneal rupture patients will have abdominal pain, abdominal peritonitis, raised in creatinine, uh, sometimes occasionally hypotension with associated, associated other abdominal injuries. But with extra peritoneal injuries, they do have a suprapubic type of pain, sometimes more uh, frightening on look, but they generally be a extra peritoneal injury. Yes, of course, they, all the patients, almost all will have hematuria. So, bladder trauma, you do a CT histogram, if it is stable, if it is intraperitoneal, we will have to go and close it. If it is in extraperitoneal, yes, only catheter drainage is sufficient. Thank you.